Hey what's up guys, it's Usawa here and this is my unboxing and review of the Redmi Note 8 Pro which is the bigger brother to the Redmi Note 8 which I've reviewed earlier. It's the classier version in this lineup sort of and I'll talk about my usage of this device as well as what I'll consider the pros and cons of using it. As a tradition, I'll leave timestamps in the description and the pinned comments so that I can get to skip ahead to sections that you want to get informed on quickly. Without further ado, let's get to the video. In the box of the Redmi Note 8 Pro, the first thing we get is the gift box, just like the Note 8. Opening that shows you the SIM ejector tool, we also get the thick user guide in, we also get the warranty card, a clear soft case, relevant cutouts. Next up is the Note 8 Pro which we'll get to later. Underneath the device is the 18 watt fast charger and the USB-C cable. There are no headphones included in the box. The Redmi Note 8 Pro is 0.23 inches bigger than the Redmi Note 8. It also shares the same Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and the back which gives it that premium feel um, as far as budget devices go. On the screen wrap in front, you also see the specs that it comes with 64 megapixels, a high resolution camera among four other cameras, liquid cooling tech for the Redmi Note 8 Pro which um, is the first device to use the processor it comes with. It's dedicated for gaming. In fact, when you check the teardown, you see a heatsink pipe for gamers, um, that's good and much more about that later in this video. Taking the wrap off, you can see the 6.53 inch glossy panel and taking the stickers off the back is also a nice glossy reflective gradient style and it has this really cool look and feel in the hand. Color options for the Redmi Note 8 Pro include mineral grey, forest green and of course pearl white which we have here. Then of course we've got the 4500mAh battery, 18W fast charger right out of the box and if you saw the previous Redmi Note 8 video, you know that regular Note 8 comes with a 10W charger in the box but both of them are capable of 18 watt fast charging. My first impressions on the build quality of the Redmi Note 8 Pro is that it is slightly heavier than the regular Redmi Note 8. Of course, the side of the device feels very flush in the hand when you're holding it, you know, but it's just heavier. On top of the Note 8 Pro, we get an infrared sensor remote for controlling appliances like air conditioners, TVs and stuff. And on the right side is the power button and volume workers, while on the left side is where we get the hybrid SIM slot, which is not like the dedicated slot on the regular Note 8. But if you want to expand your storage on this guy by 250 gigabytes, it will cost you an extra SIM. On the bottom, we get a headphone jack, USB-C port, which is also capable of reverse charging. We get another microphone port and speaker grills. The front of the Note 8 Pro houses the 20 megapixel selfie camera with the earpiece right above it and the charging indicator. On the back, just like the Note 8, the camera bump here is more prominent and it gets an extra layer. It's just a little lesser when the case is applied and it's got the protective cap for the USB-C port. On the back of the Redmi Note 8 Pro, there are four cameras, a 64 megapixel camera, 8 megapixel, dual 2 megapixel cameras one for macro and one for portraits then we've got the flash the inscription of the 64 megapixel camera i can't go without saying that the back of this device is actually very attractive to me especially this pearl white look the way it reflects looks really nice and i also like the fact that it's glass too about the question of whether this device will last um, you know, with this form factor, I'd say that there's almost nothing to worry about really. If you're careful about your devices, you probably won't get any scratch on this device since it's Gorilla Glass 5 on both sides. I however put my case on this device all through my usage. It did weigh quite heavy in the hand and it shows on the scale. It's 199 grams compared to 190 on the regular Note 8. Adding the case on it also bumped it up to 220 grams. And I remember one day I just picked up the Note 8 Pro and I was like, wow, this thing is really heavy. Um, yeah, it's a bit on the heavy side. It took over two minutes to boot and set up the Redmi Note 8 Pro. And this brings us to MIUI 10.4.4 based on Android 9. I got a security patch update for the Note 8 Pro for 10.4.5. Um, sadly, it wasn't available for the Note 8. The Note 8 is stuck at 10.3.5, but I already upgraded this to 10.4.5 with some minor changes as well. As far as the display goes, and the bezels on here are thinner, there is no Redmi branding on the bottom like the Note 8 and there's also a little bit of bleeding on the edges just like the Note 8. You get dark mode on the Note 8 Pro and as well as the Note 8, it affects the native apps but not the messages app. You can also do this ridiculous thing where you hide the notch but I don't know why people would want to hide the notch. Screen resolution on here is full HD+, 2340 by 1080 and it goes up to 500 nits of brightness, minimum of 420 nits. It's also got a decent 1500 to 1 contrast ratio on this LCD display. Uh, it supports HDR and it's very very viewable outdoors. I found streaming of videos to be very clear. It's also capped at 1080p. It did look plenty sharp and in fact, it streams HDR and the colors were just beautiful to look at. 
Of course, there's only a downward facing speaker and also there's tendency to block it when you're gaming or you're watching something. It's not a stereo speaker. Um, so using headphones would be the way to go. And speaking of stereo, what actually is stereo in the Redmi Note 8 Pro? I the dual microphones up at the top and the bottom and I tested the sound quality as well as the microphone quality and here is how it sounds. Alright guys, so this is the microphone quality test of the Xiaomi Redmi Note 8 Pro. I'm recording sound directly into the Xiaomi Redmi Note 8 Pro the same way I'll hold it when I'm making a phone call. So this is how the microphone should sound in an optimal scenario. Let me know what you guys think about this sound quality in the comment section down below. Sound quality on the Redmi Note 8 Pro was quite high in terms of the music and YouTube and I got uh, quite a lot of vibrating on the phone when I was playing. It's not a bad thing really. The microphone quality picked up more high frequencies than low frequencies at base levels. But do let me know what you guys think about the sound quality from what you heard in the comment section down below. The processor is a specific one. It came with the Helio G90T processor it's an octa core processor all the games i played had no lags in my experience with the note 8 pro it did stress the phone's battery a bit i did notice the phone getting warmer after i played but it cooled up pretty fast much faster than the redmi note 8 this can be attributed to the liquid cooling system which i mentioned earlier in terms of battery life though we've got a 4500 milliamp hour battery built in on this guy and after gaming on this device for 30 minutes battery went down by 15 percent from 35 to 20 percent in terms of uh, medium to heavy use i couldn't really drain the battery to zero percent i usually ended the day at 20 percent this is two days and it's six percent so uh, i'd say it's pretty impressive in terms of battery life as i mentioned it comes with an 18 wire charger and charging speed wasn't too different from the note 8 actually and i didn't really like this in 30 minutes it went from zero to 33 percent in another 30 minutes it went to 66 percent that's in one hour, zero to six six percent. There's not much of a difference if you look at it, but this one took under two hours to charge compared to the Redmi Note 8. The Redmi Note 8 Pro comes with MIUI 10 based on Android 9 with just minimal bloatware on it. My version on here is a 6GB RAM with 64GB of storage and there's also a 6GB RAM and 128GB of storage version. You can expand it to 256GB and if you're obsessed with updating your apps as well, Xiaomi has a system app updater in the settings but that's just for native apps, you can also do it on the Play Store. About the phone security features, it took less than 2 seconds to set up Face ID and of course Xiaomi tells you that it's less secure. It's fast but I wouldn't recommend it. In fact, you only need to capture a portion of your face to register it. What I like though is that the fingerprint reader is flush with the camera bump making it look sleek. It's not something separated so I think it looks cool and it works fast so 10 over 10 would recommend. Unlike the Note 8 which has Bluetooth 4.2 this has Bluetooth 5.0, so you can do this thing like sharing wireless audio and it supports the new Glow 4G band. In terms of calling, texting and basic functionality, I didn't have anything to complain about. If someone brought this device to me to guess the price, I'd have said maybe like 150k to 200 but this particular model, 64GB of storage, 96,600 naira on Jumia. In terms of additional features that may be sort of hidden, what you can do is what is on the notification shade, that tiny small corner of your phone. You can either make it a search button to search Google or settings. You also get quick ball, which is this handy thing that takes a screenshot, multitask, goes home and um, lock your device if that's something that you do frequently. And of course, you can even customize or remove and delete which shortcuts you have. You can, for instance, toss in a touch light there, you know, for quick access. There is also second spaces, which is like having a two-in-one phone or a business and a work phone. So I can either unlock the second space with a short L and I'll just see, you know, different apps. And I'll unlock my first space with a long L with my regular day-to-day -day apps. The notate spaces also work with fingerprint. So for instance, my left fingerprint is mapped to my second space and my right fingerprint is mapped to my first space. Now to the cameras of the Redmi Note 8 Pro. Well, just like the Redmi Note 8, the Redmi Note 8 Pro has a total of five cameras. In the camera app, we get slow motion, we shoot at 120, 240 and 960 FPS. We also get short video mode. You can even add music to it while recording but it's a maximum of 15 seconds. You've got video mode, photo mode with AI, HDR, and macro modes. 64 megapixel camera mode with a huge aspect ratio, portrait mode, night mode, panorama mode, pro mode. You also get panorama mode in the front for selfies. 
of course we also get portrait mode no 64 megapixel camera mode but we get the rest of photo video uh, short video but no slow motion in the front camera the back camera gives you a total of 10x in terms of digital zoom in 10 times zoom and the resolution are ridiculously high 9248 by 6936 and when i did the calculation at 60 dpi if you put the figure uh, in vertical pixels it was 154 inches my macbook pro is 15 inches diagonally imagine taking that and multiplying it 10 times that's how wide it will be pixel for pixel but how did it look like in real world tests wide angle of the 2x shot looked good uh, the wide angle shots were softer and warmer and that's attributable to its lower 8 megapixels in terms of portrait on the back camera though the note 8 pro did miles better than the regular note 8 both in terms of color contrast saturation and overall colors comparing a regular shot to a 64 megapixel shot on the note 8 pro seems off at this point first of all the phone itself regular shots only get up to one time zoom in the gallery but in the gallery when you double tap on a 64 megapixel shot you can double tap twice you get a 1x preview and the second time you get a high definition preview which lets you see more details in the shots uh, on the computer there's also a clear difference between the regular shots and the 64 megapixel camera shots they also did translate in social media posts i also did notice that the 64 megapixel camera is slightly brighter than the regular one and of course in terms of the size on average it's five times bigger than the regular shots of the same thing in terms of file size colors on the note 8 pro really popped the greens looked very pleasant the reds were deep and one small tiny difference to note is that if you turn tags on you will be able to see which lens took which shot like ai versus 64 megapixel cameras selfies were plenty sharp like really sharp of course that's if you turn off xiaomi's default beauty filter portrait selfies were also sharp but um they can you can tell that it's software driven because of how i separated i look from the background but in a different scenario where you are further separated it would look pleasant i did enjoy carrying around the camera if you're looking to get it for pictures it's a go in terms of video i'll start with slow motion 960 fps is the highest slow motion you can get on your tape pro and this is it and it, it looks it looks uh good it re it's recording the frame rate but xiaomi compresses it and makes it a whole new video on its own so you can't slow it down by yourself by editing it on a computer for instance if you wanted to do that but it looks okay if you ignore some of the detail losses the Redmi note 8 pro can be very good for a vlog where you can record and edit for the most part 4k video quality on this camera came out really nice and sharp but it's just capped at 30 fps which would be okay for some on the part of the video quality of the camera on this note 8 pro in terms of the camera stabilization i don't think it's there but both the note 8 and note 8 pro don't have that the note 8 pro tries but the note 8 isn't just as good and in a rough scenario where you're getting shaky footage it might not look pleasant hey what's up guys so this is the front facing camera visual quality of the xiaomi redmi note 8 pro um as you can see it is quite overexposed at this point here and when i tap on it it actually tries to level everything out it darkens the image but not too much as the redmi note 8 which i already reviewed and uh, it switches back to a default on my face and blows everything out in the background which is quite normal for these cameras it's a 20 megapixel front facing camera that shoots at 1080p 30 fps at the max and uh, yeah let me know what you guys think of the visual quality as well as the audio quality in the comment section down below anyway that's it for my note 8 pro review i've spent some time with this device to make this video for you guys uh so let me know what you guys think about it is there anything i missed uh is there any question that you might have please let me know in the comment section down below also guys if you enjoyed this video make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll be the first to know when i drop a new video links to my handle right here thank you for watching this one and i'll see you guys in the next one